Hello and welcome to the CDP Studio tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to create a cool blinking LED setup with several states and a user interface, all using the Raspberry Pi. And here you can see the wiring used in this video. We start by creating a system. We then need to add a GPIO server to our application. This is the component that will be used to communicate with the GPIO pins. We are going to use three pins in our setup. We will need to type in the correct pin numbers where we connected our LEDs to the Raspberry Pi. We are going to be setting the pin values with our application, therefore we need to tick the input. This input is relative to the GPIO server component, not the Raspberry Pi itself. We are now ready to test if we have set up our Raspberry Pi correctly. We just need to find our Raspberry Pi on the network and deploy to it. Keep in mind that you have to input the SSH username and password if you haven't done this already. The Raspberry Pi on my network has already been connected to. After selecting the correct kit, we run our system. Let's see if we can connect and toggle the LEDs. By the looks of it, our configuration is correct and we can toggle all of the LEDs. The next thing we are going to do is create the LED controller component. We will build the component using a state machine with four states. Each of the states will have a different blinking pattern for our LEDs. Okay, so first we create a library, and then our LED controller component. Here you can see a simple visualization of the different states that we will implement. We will have a sign pattern, a sequence, and a random, and then a off state. First, we add three signals from the CDP section in the context menu. They are all going to be Boolean. In this section of the video, I will fast forward whenever repetition is involved. Next up are the states. We will add three states, sign, sequence, and random. We will use the default null state as the off state. We also need to add transitions between our states so that we can switch between them. We are going to add all possible transitions. I will fast forward this part. Finally, we can start implementing our states. If you don't know how state machines work, then I suggest watching our video on state machines. In the null state, we simply set all the outputs to false. In the sign state, we will use a counter in order to set our outputs to true one by one. We also have to use a increment variable and flip this at the edges in order to create the alternating effect. The state process functions will be called on an interval determined by the component. The sequence state is implemented in a funny way. You could use the same approach as we used with the sign component, though. The way it's implemented here is that we first make sure that only one LED is turned on. Then we simply shift all the LEDs down one notch, almost like a bit shift. Next up we need to add the message handlers. We are going to trigger these message handlers using messages that we will send from our GUI. The message handlers themselves will be used to change states. From the message handler we can request a new state by setting it as the requested state. We should now be ready to build our library.
with our library built, it should show up in the resource pane. We can now add our new LED controller component to our application. We can now connect our component to the pins of our GPIO server. We use the routing system to specify that the GPIO will get its value from our component's signals. With all of our pins connected, we need to set up our GUI. If you haven't got any experience with making GUIs using the design mode, then this part might be a bit fast for you. We are just going to create a relatively simple GUI though. First, I'm going to place everything in a grid layout. Then I'm going to add some buttons for changing the states. It needs to be the message-based buttons, because we are going to send messages to our LED controller using them. We also need to visualize our LEDs. To do this, we will use the CDP-based LAMP widget. Let's name our buttons according to which state they will trigger. In order to get the UI to cover the entire box, I'm going to set the layout for the main widget. This made it so that the lamps and buttons now seem to have become a bit short. Let's fix this by changing their vertical size policies. We are almost done. We just need to connect the UI to the components of our application. First, we are going to route the message buttons to the component where they will send the message. We also need to specify the message that the button is going to send. We type in the message under text command. For the lamps, we will use the Styling Root option. This is because the lamp can take on several different colors as styles. By routing this to a boolean, we get to see it change between black and green. Now we are ready to test our full system. Here you can see the system in action with the UI fully functioning and able to change between states using the message buttons. But because we are using boolean values to set the lamp, we only get to see the green color. There are other colors available, and um, here we can see the colors. They can be selected by setting the style value to a number between 0 and 5. We can fix this issue quite easily using operators. We don't even need to stop the GUI application to do this. The signals from our LED controller have an internal value and a value. The internal value is the raw value emitted by the component, while the value can be changed using an operator. 
We are going to add scaling operators to our signals and use them to change the value from a boolean value to a integer value. I use the mouse wheel to quickly switch between the signals of the LED controller. The scaling operator needs scaling points in order to work. Because our signal is boolean, it has two states, 0 and 1. I will add one scaling point for 0 and have it output 0. For the other scaling point, I will output the value corresponding to the color of the LED. 2 for yellow. Five for blue. And four for red. Because the GPIO server expects uh, boolean values, we now have to change the routing to use the internal value of our signals. We can start up the application again, and it should start communicating the correct colors to the GUI. If we now connect to our system, we can inspect the difference between the internal value and the scaled value. Now, with this knowledge, it's up to you to create something awesome using the Raspberry Pi, or maybe several Raspberry Pis. This was all for this tutorial, maybe I'll see you in the next one.